Today's podcast is about the voltage divider. So specifically today, I want to define what the voltage divider, and I probably can't overestimate how important this is. So the book I previously used, the author said every circuit can be made into the voltage divider. So essentially, if you understand the voltage divider, you can essentially understand any circuit. So what is the voltage divider? Essentially, the voltage divider is this circuit, essentially a battery and two different resistors in series. Okay, so we can solve that problem. We know how to find the current through those resistors and the potential dropped across each of those resistors. Essentially, we apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. Right, so we know the change in potential of the battery plus the change in potential across R1 plus the change in potential across R2 equals zero. We can choose a direction of the current. We can draw the polarity marks, this battery high to low, with the currents going this way, and this is high and this is low, this is high and this is low. We can substitute the information. Ohm's law, so we go up the battery, if we go around clockwise, the change in potential is gonna be plus the EMF of the battery, and we're going to have drop in potential across R1, that's going to be IR1, and drop in potential across R2, that'll be minus IR2. So we add all those up, we do some algebra, and we find the current is the EMF of the battery divided by the total resistance of the circuit. So now we can determine the change of potential across each resistor, and delta V R1 is just IR1, and delta V R2 is just IR2. Okay, so we can apply our loop rule and junction rule find the potential across each of those elements what's that mean right we've essentially said if we plot those two values you can see that essentially a fraction of the emf of the battery is going to be distributed across each of these resistors and so that's where the term voltage divider comes right we can divide the battery emf in any way that we want by picking the appropriate resistor value for r1 and r2 and so you can look at this graph and say this is the ratio of R2 to R1. And if R2 is small compared to R1, we're down here. And if R2 is large compared to R1, we're over here. And what you can see is that what's always true at any ratio of R is that the change of potential across R1 plus the change of potential across R2 is going to be equal to the EMF of the battery. Again, that is the voltage divider. And what we can see, or one general rule we can say, is that the larger resistor has the larger change in potential. So essentially, if R2 is larger than R1, more potential will be dropped across R2 than R1. So we're going to divide the input voltage. So we put a signal in. We're going to measure the output across R2. We know how to calculate that. We just did that before. So it's going to be some fraction of the signal that we put in. So that's going to be the output voltage. So if we put some load resistor at the output, the load resistor will essentially experience V out. Right? That's the point of sort of the voltage divider. This R1 and R2 set what's the output voltage, and then we can hook up what we want, and we can get whatever voltage we need. Turns out this isn't always true, and we'll explore the limitations of that later on. Okay, so let's go look at the voltage divider one more time. We know how to find delta V R2, which is just going to be V out. We can look at the plot across there. So the, this is blue line is going to be the change in potential across R2. It's also going to be V out. So it when R is really small, there's going to be no potential at V out, right? Which makes sense. We replace this by a wire, then all the battery potential is going to be across R1. V out will be zero. If we make R2 really, really, really big compared to R1, well, then all the potential of the battery and most of the potential of the battery will be across R2. And so we can say, hey, as R2 approaches zero, then V out equals zero. Or if R2 gets really large compared to R1, then V out equals V in. And then one other special case is if R1 is equal to R2, then V out over V in 
or V out is just going to be V in over 2, or 50%. So that's right here. If they're equal and the ratio is 1, then half the potential is across each of the resistors. And so I said that this is an important circuit, and it can look a lot of different ways. Right? We can draw voltage dividers in a more the way we just did, right? where it's kind of obvious that these two resistors are here, but we can draw it any which way. And in each of these situations, these are voltage dividers, right? The potential of the battery is going to be dropped across these other two resistors. And so we know we can take any complicated circuit, and we can use equivalent resistance to sort of get it in this form and find out what's the potential across any of these circuit elements. That ends this podcast.